This video will demonstrate the advantages of using a simple delay line for operating the Vox, the voice Vox on your rig. I'm operating remotely and in the other room is a K3S and it's on lower sideband on 160 meters hooked up to a dummy load and for a test of the Vox to see how quickly it would activate and pass the audio to the RF we sent a test tone with FL Digi at 60 words a minute just sending the letter E and here's one dit the green represents FL Digi and the red is from the K3's own sideband audio monitor so as you see it's not quite the full uh, length it's almost cut in half by the Vox circuits uh, latency so we measured from the end of the K3's waveform here to the end of the green waveform and it was about 12 milliseconds so we added 12 milliseconds to the to the uh, delay line for the voice plus 3 milliseconds so we have it set at 15 right here with this simple delay line linear interpolation the delay time is now 15 milliseconds so how we get the uh, voice box uh, triggered first is we're using a test tone here at 20 Hertz at minus 18 DB and we're taking this to the right channel of this gate on the left so we're using calf gate here and on the right channel input we have that test tone at 20 Hertz you really can't hear 20 Hertz and being minus 20 dB just about you wouldn't notice it anyway so we're sending this with the audio but we're mostly using this so that it activates the gate first and remains on during the voice until you pause your speech and you can hear in the background the uh, the rig returns to receive so from the exit of the gate just this right channel it immediately goes to the K3S and this is just an audio uh, Zeta NJ bridge and so we're passing audio to the rigs computer in the other room and from there it's using Zeta NJ bridge as well taking the audio output from the right speaker right uh, speaker output and it's going to the line input of the rig for sideband so that gate that test tone at 20 Hertz activates that gate and then the voice is delayed by 15 milliseconds so that the gate I mean the voice box is fully open and then the RF is ready now to be processed by any audio input we use a simple amplifier here so that we don't blow out the ALC so you turn it down I have it minus 10 DB so that you're just activating the ALC just as many S units as you need. I think on the K3, you know, they said two or three. So you have to you have to kind of take a look at that. So you don't want the ALC going crazy, otherwise you'll get too much distortion. So we have a minimal one or two ALC uh, LED units on the K3 lighting up at the peaks of my voice. So we have a, a pretty good balance there between audio input and RF output every syllable every beginning part of a syllable is now going to be sent out so that the full speech is received on the other end so you're transmitting to full speech and not getting chopped off first syllables by 12 milliseconds uh, every time that you operate the Vox you'll, have, you'll get a 12 millisecond chop on whatever you started your speech with whatever consonant you started your speech with so this is one way to avoid that now another advantage of processing audio on a computer is you can apply DSP plugins to your voice as one example we're going to uh, show a graphic equalizer from the side from the uh, audio monitor that's uh, inherent in the K3 so I, it's an input monitor so everything that's coming in goes through a circuit and returns back so that you can hear how you sound or what your speech is going to sound like as it's being transmitted 
So I'm going to send a podcast with Aqualung here, and then I'll show you the graphic equalizer and some of the advantages that it may have, especially for processing voice. So here's the equalizer. It is enabled. This is what my voice sounds like without it. And now this is back, filter back in. So here's the podcast. This is uh, in the show notes here, this particular one. W6OBB, this is Eric, 4Z1UG. Are you there, Art? 4Z1UG, Eric, this is Art Bell, W6OBB, and prompt about how you doing. I'm great, Art. Thanks for joining me on the QSO Today podcast. Can we start at the beginning of your ham radio story? How did you become interested in amateur radio? <laughs> um, it is a very long story. I'm now 70 years old, Eric, and I began, um, I'm going to say I began my interest when I was this about RF 11 scope. or 12, and I would go to my grandma's oh, house, itself. and she had so this old, shows you what's, what the uh, RF wave looks five like feet going out. Up uh, old radio, and it covered the shortwave bands, uh, not sideband, uh, which we didn't even have then, actually, uh, but just AM shortwave, and I would listen around, I'd hear other countries, and I thought it was magic. Okay. So we have the graph equalizer. You could also use compressors, and this has a lot of LATSPA plugins that comes with Jack Rack. Very useful, especially uh, for setting up uh, voice with some free software and so forth. But the main uh, reason for this is to prevent chopping of any of your consonants or the beginning of your uh, vocal speech by using this linear delay line test tone that you can't hear anyway, but we can use that test tone to activate the Vox first, keep it open for a certain amount of time after you stop speaking with this release here. So I'll go ahead and turn this up. Testing. And we'll turn it down. Check. Test. One, two. Check. One, two. Test. Test. And you see how that works there. So you adjust that however you want. You could also do the same thing on the rig. It's a little easier to control it here, especially operating remote. Thanks for watching.